My entitled sister actually is demanding that I pay her bills while she lives with me rent-free, eats all my food, and has the nerve to try this. I'm 25 female, I've done really well in my life, and I've done it all by myself, without any help. I went to university and got a good degree in a subject that was able to get me a good job and a good field. And because of that, I was able to move out of my parents' house and buy my own house near my job. I have a good social life and I'm able to live fairly well. I'm single as I don't have time for a relationship right now. My job keeps me really busy. I do have a younger sister named Jenny, who's totally the opposite of me in every way. Maybe because she was younger, but... I feel my parents spoiled her and gave her much more than I was given. She was able to do gymnastics and dance classes, which my parents paid for. I had no interest in those things as they were a waste of time and would not give me a career. So I was not given anything. It seemed very unfair. When I went away to university, I got a job to make some money for myself and I was proud that I was able to look after my own self. I didn't need to get a loan for my fees as my parents had a fund for me, and one for Jenny. Jenny was never going to be bright enough to go to university, so that seemed like a wasted fund of money that could have helped me out when I qualified and bought my house near to my job. Instead, it was put to one side and Jenny was told she could use it as her wedding fund, if that was what she preferred. What a waste! Anyways... Jenny moved to the same town two years ago, and she got a job working for a, quote, theater, and that was something she had always wanted to do. She was always wanting to be on stage. This didn't really pay much money, and so she ended up waitressing on the side. In time, she ended up just waitressing as the theater closed down. It was just a small, cheap place, and not exactly Broadway. It was at her waitressing job that Jenny met her boyfriend. Well... I should say ex-boyfriend now, Leo. I knew right away that he was not the type of person anyone should be dating. He worked in some kind of technical field, and so he worked from home a lot. He did try to explain to me once, but it just sounded like a load of mumbo-jumbo. He said he has good income, and he owned his own house, he's 21, so I highly doubt that. I suspect that he's renting, and was just trying to sound better than he actually is. I mean, I was very clear to Jenny that he would just use her for whatever he could, then dump her. I was so right about that. But hey, we'll get to that soon. Jenny and I don't have a close relationship as, why, well, we have very little in common. But we do meet up around once a month that she lives in the same town and my parents ask me to make sure she's okay. As I said, she's spoiled. At first it would just be me and Jenny, but then it would be me, Jenny, and Leo. One time, Leo brought one of his friends to introduce to me, as if I would want to date one of his friends who play with computers all day. If and when I date someone, it'll be a man. <laughs> a man with a successful career. Things went on like this for around eight months until one night, I was woken up by the phone call from Jenny, saying she was outside my house and could I let her in. I was angry, as I had to go to work the following day. I let her in, and she was a mess. She'd been crying, and she said that she needed somewhere to stay, as Leo had broken up with her. Huh, <laughs> totally saw that coming. And she said she had nowhere to go. Jenny had been living with Leo. I did say it was stupid to move in with a man that you barely know. Anyways, when she finally stopped crying, she managed to tell me why they've broken up. Because, well, she had found out she was pregnant, and he had to leave her. I wasn't surprised at all. I said that Jenny could stay with me for a couple days until she worked something out and went back to bed. Jenny managed to make things a lot worse for her situation over the next couple of days and says that she was constantly throwing up. She tried to go to work at the restaurant, but she was sent home every day for spending so much time in the bathroom being sick. The final straw, I guess you would say, was when she threw up on a customer. Apparently, the smell of fish made her instantly sick. Well, she was fired. So, that's where we are at the moment. I'm stuck with my pregnant sister who has no man, no job. She wants to stay with me, and I'm not sure if I'm okay with that. 
She is demanding enough at the best of times and knows she is pregnant and sick. Which is too much for me to deal with. Ginny made her bed, so I'm saying that she should go to sleep right now inside of it. Surely, no one should be expected to look after their sister just because she made bad decisions and life turned out not so good to her. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. We have a very interesting story today. It does come complete with six updates. Update number three is going to blow your socks off, so go grab your favorite beverage, sit back, relax. Here is update number one. I've spoken to my parents and I'm not entirely happy with the outcome of the conversation. Firstly, they asked me if I'd spoken to Jenny about whether she wanted to move back home, and I did not see how that was relevant as Jenny was homeless. They said she's not homeless as she's staying with me, and that I should allow her to stay until the morning sickness phase at least ends, and she'd be able to go job hunting. Or it was possible she might patch things up with Leo. They seem to have a higher opinion of him than I do, <laughs> which was not hard. I said that it was not acceptable as I'm single, I have a mortgage to pay, and having someone else in the house increases my bills and my food. For someone who was throwing up as much as Jenny was, she sure was eating a lot. My parents told me that I needed to be nice to my sister, feel some empathy for her situation. So I agreed that she could stay with me for a sort of while, but was not careful just to make it sound like she could stay her whole pregnancy. My parents said they would put some money into my account, help with the bills. I hung up the phone thinking, of course, anything for Jenny, but nothing for me. Well, I guess I have to just make the most of a bad situation, and I've spoken to Jenny about it. I've made it clear that if she's not contributing financially... By the way, though, I did not tell her about the money from our parents, as that's nothing to do with her... But if she's not contributing financially, I expect it. And I expect her to help do the housework, pull her weight while she's here. Ginny said she would do her best, but she was finding it really hard being sick all the time. I told her that pregnancy was not an illness. She needs to stop feeling sorry for herself. Anyways, that's where I'm at now. I've been burdened with my pregnant sister for the foreseeable future. Am I right to feel annoyed and put out by the situation? Hey guys, this is update 2. I know I haven't updated this in a while, if it would have not just been me complaining every day as Jenny's driving me mad with her behavior. Well, two months have passed since the last update, and I've grown increasingly annoyed with how entitled my sister is. When she came to stay, she was three months pregnant. And she's now five months, and although she's still throwing up more than I would expect, it's less than that at start. I was good and tried to be understanding, as requested by my parents, but it's getting harder every single day to deal with her. She seems to be up and down with how she feels about the pregnancy, and she cries a lot. She said she misses Leo. Although, I had no idea why she would miss him, and she's left him messages and emails that have gone unanswered. There was a phone call, uh, it was a few weeks back to my landlord, where Leo left a message whilst Jenny was at a doctor's appointment, but I deleted it, as he was not offering anything constructive. If he's not prepared to allow her to move back, then he has nothing to offer us. She asked me to come to the hospital scan and appointments, but I just do not have time to take off work. One of us has to still be bringing money into the household, right? She's been going on her own, and she said that she felt like she had no support from me. I told her she's living at the house for free. So really, she should not expect anything more from me. <laughs> yeah, my parents are sending some money to cover for food and bills for Jenny, but that is hardly the point. I still have to be there listening to her moaning and crying. She does not know about the money from my parents, and she would just ask for some anyways to buy things for the baby. That is not what the money's for. It's to help the bills while she's laying here for free eating my food. I've mentioned a few times to both Jenny and my parents that there will be no room for her once the baby is actually born. I mean, I do have a spare bedroom which Jenny's currently cooped up in, but I'm not prepared to have a baby there. 
I get up very early for work, and there's just not the space for all the things a baby needs. My house has three bedrooms, but one's my office, and the spare room, well, it needs to be available if I have friends come to stay. At the moment, I'm unable to have any of the company, as Jenny is here taking up the space. Also, I'm not prepared to subject my friends to the crying pregnant mess of a sister. It's not really how my friends and I live our lives. Frankly, I'm embarrassed to admit that she's going to be a single mother with a loser of an ex-boyfriend. No one in my friend groups even knows she's here. They think I'm having work done on the house, which is why they can't come over. I just go to their homes instead. I've been talking with Jenny over the last few weeks about finding a job. I don't think it's good for her mental state to be sitting at home all day on the sofa watching rubbish television shows and stuffing her face with all the food out of my fridge. Which she usually throws up anyways. Wasted calories. Jenny said that she has no energy and feels sick all the time. She said that her doctor had told her to take it easy as she's a high-risk pregnancy. Whatever one of those is. Personally, I think she's just going to be lazy and living off me. I really don't know what to do with her. I've made it clear though, crystal clear, that I will not allow her to continue as she is. And she must start looking for a job. Jenny seems to think that no one will employ a person who's five months pregnant, as she'll be leaving to have a baby in a short while. But I don't think that's necessarily true. There's lots of jobs out there that are short-term contracts. Cleaning, you know, stuff like that that she could do up until the baby's born. She just needs to stop being so entitled and get off the sofa and work for herself. I've picked up a few job applications for her, and she has said that she'll fill them out when she fills up to it. I've told her that if she does not, then I'll do them for her, as she's not doing herself any good sitting around feeling sorry for herself. What do I do? Why can't Jenny see that I only have her best interest in mind? She needs to be strong, stand up for her own two little feet, as she can't expect me to have her living here forever. I feel as though my family are just expecting way too much from me at this point, and it really is unfair that I'm basically acting as a career to my sister. If she needs the level of this attention, she should just go back to my parents' house. Do you think I should talk to them and tell them that they're being unfair expecting me to do the job and look after a pregnant daughter when I have a life of my own? It really is unfair, and I don't know why I'm expecting to sacrifice my happiness and well-being because of Jenny's bad life choices. Update number three. I can't take any more. I'm really at my wit's end, and so I'm ready to explode. Jenny has failed to get a job over the last three months. She's now eight months pregnant and is absolutely huge. Looks like a balloon. She can barely get herself off the sofa without help. It, it's like having a huge fat toddler live in your house who can't seem to do anything for themselves. She demands that I help her to breathe, bathe, make food, run to the pharmacy for her when she needs her medication. I'm basically my sister's slave, and I'm not sure how much more I can take. I've called my parents so many times, saying it's not acceptable that I'm having to live like this. My life is basically ruined, and I can't see how it's ever going to get better. I'm working long hours and then coming home to be whined at by my entitled lazy sister who wants to run me around waiting on her hand and foot. And it's led to many arguments between us as I've told her more than I can count. I am not responsible for the fact that she's pregnant and her boyfriend dumped her. My parents keep telling me that I need to be understanding and Jenny does not want to move back to her hometown as she still has hopes that Leo will change his mind once the baby boy is born. <laughs> I actually laughed out loud at that point. I'm telling you, he's not going to change his mind. He saw her for what she was once he had used her, got rid of her. I know what men are like. They're all the same. My parents then accused me of being bitter, as I've had bad relationships in the past. But I told them this was not about me. Not at all. It's about Jenny. She'd made a mess of her life, and it seems as though I was being expected to suffer for it. My life was badly affected, and I had no social life, as I've always had to be home for Jenny. I could not go on dates, as how could I bring a date home with my fat sister lounging on the sofa, and I was expecting to pay for everything? My parents pointed out that they were providing money for Jenny. 
But as I said, it was not enough, when she basically never went out and was eating enough to feed a freaking army. All in all, I'm so angry that I'm being used like this, and I think that something is going to have to change drastically and soon. I can't spend another couple of months looking at her laying on my couch or listening to her moan about swollen ankles and indigestion. Jenny made her bed, and now she's going to lay in it, not my sofa living off of my hard work and generosity. I'm stressed to the max and worn out right now. Work's really hard, and there's been a lot of disputes amongst staff and managers, but no one knows what's going on. We've been working much longer hours, and I'm feeling absolutely burnt out. Jenny never even managed to get a temporary job, and now I agree that there's not hope for her finding work this close to having a baby. I feel as though if I don't get all this off my chest, I'm going to explode with unfairness of my life. I've decided that I'll give it one more month. And if things do not get better and Jenny does not get off her fat backside and at least help out around the house, things are going to change. Update number four. Things came to a boiling point last night, and I'm still trying to process what happened. This might be quite a short update, as I'm really just trying to work out what happened, as it's all quite unreal. I've been trying so hard to not lose my temper, and be kind, understanding sister, but Jenny has finally pushed me too far. I went into work at 7am this morning for a meeting. Then I worked all day, until I finally got home, about 9pm. It was a long, exhausting day, and all I wanted to do was go home, have something to eat, a nice hot bath with a glass of wine. Instead, I walk into absolute chaos. There's no lights on, and I assume that Jenny had gone to bed, as she'll sometimes say that being pregnant is exhausting and crashed quite early, in a way that would have been lovely as I could have had the house to myself. It was not what happened. As soon as I walked into the front door, I saw the chaos. There were two dirty cups and plates on the sofa. No sign of my sister. I turned on the lights and as I'm approaching the kitchen, I heard her calling my name. As I walked into the kitchen, I stopped dead in the doorway. There's flour everywhere, eggs smashed on the floor. Sitting amongst it all was Jenny, her eyes red and puffy. I stare at her. She starts crying. She starts to explain, but I've just had enough. I was tired and wanted to rest, but instead I'll be cleaning up yet another mess from my sister. I literally threw my arms up in the air, stormed to my bedroom, ignoring her shouts to help her up. I called my parents and told them that if they not here as soon as possible to pick up Jenny, they would find her and her belongings out in the garden waiting for them. I was done with her drama and her pathetic inability to cope with life. My mom was asking what happened, but I hung up the phone and went to pack Jenny's clothes. Once I've done that, I finally went and hoisted my well of a sister off the floor and deposited her and her bags nearest the door. The whole time she's crying and begging me to be careful, but for months she's abused me in the home for the mental health that I've gotten out the house. I felt like a long time before my parents arrived, and they took one look at Jenny sitting on the chair covered in flour and lost it with me. They gently helped Jenny out of the car, and then my dad came back and shouted at me for treating my sister so poorly. I'm in shock right now because I've done everything for Jenny for months. Made her welcomed in my house and provided for her. I told my dad to get out of my house and I slammed that door. I'm so upset and feel betrayed by my family. I've done nothing wrong and yet, well, I'm being seen as the bad guy. I don't understand why I'm also let down by them and Jenny's treated like this princess. It's not fair. And I'm sick of always being less in the eyes of my parents. Update number five. Somehow I've come to be the bad guy in the story and I'm not sure how or why. I did everything that I was asked to do and, well, it's been thrown back in my face. It would appear that Jenny has been telling my parents all sorts of lies and crap about me. And now my parents think I'm some kind of devil. My mom called me a couple of days after Jenny left and said some awful things that, well, Jenny had said about me. My mom asked how could I have asked my pregnant sister to get a job when she's obviously not very well. Did I really think that she would have to do this and be able to work? She asked what happened to the money that her and dad had sent me to help. Why did I need extra money when they were sending money? 
I told them that I've used the money for paying bills and buying food as Jenny, all she did was lay on the sofa and eat. Whilst using all my electricity and heating, I had to pay my mortgage and bills. So there's that. That's where the money went, Mom. My mom also asked why I've not told Jenny about the money, and I asked her why would I. It was money for my dealing with her, Jenny living with me. My mom asked whether it was true that I've been going for massages, hair appointments, and nail appointments more than normal. Was that where the money's going? I said that I would have done that anyways. I just needed more me time, because I was forced to care for Jenny, who made no efforts at all to help herself. I pointed out the same as I had said to Jenny, that Jenny was pregnant as a result of her own carelessness, and this did not mean she needed to wait on her hand and foot. It was not a disability, for goodness sake. My mom hung up the phone on me after saying I was an absolute terrible sister. I'm in total shock about the whole thing. Jenny must have told some awful lies about me, as all I did was care for her and give up my social life for her. I did find out something interesting from a friend of mine, though. Leo had been visiting Jenny at my parents' house, and they were talking. Now my parents will see what a loser he is, and is entitled to his fault that I was left with Jenny in the first place. I did everything I could to protect her, and I must have deleted dozens of voicemails and thrown away a pile of letters from him so that Jenny was not upset. I was being a good sister, and this is how they thank me? I was finally told that unless I apologized to Jenny for kicking her out, then they would not be able to see me in the same light. That is not going to happen, as I did nothing wrong. What would you have done if you were sitting here in my shoes, and you ended up with a parasite of a sister living with you, and treating you like a nurse or a servant? It is annoying, and I'm fed up with them all. What's up, everybody? Mr. Reddito here. This is a wild story. Let's know your opinions in the comment section, but first of all, you need to know, there's one final update, update number six, so let's see what's going on with Jenny. I'm back again, and this is the final time I'll even be talking about this. I want to lay out what happened in the past few weeks, and you can see how badly I was treated. Then I can show my parents that they're acting in a cruel way to me, and I've done nothing to deserve what has befallen for me. So... I mentioned earlier that there was a lot of stress at work and it got worse over the past few weeks. I went into work one morning and everything had been cleared out. All the computers were gone, the staff were all standing around looking confused. It appears that my boss was not as honest as he should have been and had not been paying his taxes or his suppliers. The company was bankrupt and we were all out of a job. I'd been living beyond my means recently as I've gotten accustomed to the extra money from my parents and I had still been having issues and, well, I went for massages and beauty treatments as I was when Jenny was here and I used that money. I'd also celebrated my freedom from her by doing a lot of shopping. Without my job, I would not be able to pay my credit card bills or my mortgage. I didn't panic as I was sure that I'd be able to get another job soon enough as I was an intelligent woman who had held a good position for a number of years. It turns out when you work for a company that's been defrauding the government, you really can't get a job easily. Again, this was not my fault in any way. When I fell behind with my mortgage, the bank started to repossess my proceedings and I was about to become homeless. I'd had no choice but to phone my parents and tell them I needed them to help me, as I was about to be homeless. My dad answered the phone and we talked. I told him I needed him to send me the payments that were outstanding on my mortgage and credit cards to stop me from being left homeless. I was about to lose everything. My dad sighed and asked me, was I prepared to admit that life can go wrong and it's not your fault, just like what happened to Jenna? I laughed and said, it was nowhere near the same. She was stupid, got pregnant by a loser, and I lost my job because of everyone else's fault. My dad then said that he would not be paying off my outstanding debt until I accepted that I was in the wrong. But I said he's just being unreasonable. I've done nothing wrong at all, ever. It's so unfair that people treat me like this. Even my own parents and now turning against me because of Jenny? This was all around six months ago. 
and I'm writing this from a sofa of a friend's house where I've been staying for the past few months. I'm still struggling to find a job, and my friends keep nagging me for money for staying here. I'm sleeping on the sofa, so I'm not exactly sure what I even owe them. I don't even have a bedroom. It's hardly my fault I can't find a job that meets my standards. I'm hardly going to do waitressing with my qualifications. She's told me that I'll have to move out if I don't get a job, which is just another person who's turning against me for no reason. To rub it in, Ginny and Leo have worked out their differences and they're back together. Leo was apparently scared of being a dad. What a loser. And they're talking about marriage. They're living in Leo's house, so I messaged Jenny, saying I needed to come stay with her as I had helped her when she was in trouble. Well, she sent me a message saying, No way. Two words. No. Way. She found out I've deleted all Leo's messages and is furious as he was trying to make amends with her a long time ago. She said it's my own fault that she's lived with me so long as I've sabotaged her chance of speaking of Leo. So here I am, after doing everything for everyone else about the homelessness. I've had nowhere to go, and unless I apologize to Jenny, I'm not even welcome at my parents' house. So I want to know, should I do a fake apology to my sister so I can move back to my parents even though I'm not sorry at all? I did nothing wrong. Please tell me I'm not crazy, and, well, they're just acting unreasonable. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. I hope you enjoyed today's story. I really just have one question for you. Do you think OP had a right to stop the messages from her sister getting from Leo? By not allowing her to get those messages, OP's sister did say, Hey, it's your fault. I had to stay here for so long. I was trying to rekindle my flame with my lover. And here you go, messing it up. So guys, my question to you is, do you believe OP made a mistake by blocking those messages? Drop a comment down below, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. If you're new here, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another fresh video.